Hello and welcome. My name is Richard and in this video I will present our paper about instruction set architecture extensions for finite field arithmetic. We investigate the impact of small accelerators and in this work we examined an instruction set extension for finite field arithmetic. To benchmark such an extension we applied it to lattice based cryptography. Our contributions are as follows. We use an open RISC-V implementation to introduce an instruction set architecture extension for finite field arithmetic. We present an optimized RISC-V implementation of the Kaiba and Newhop ciphers for the standard RISC-V as well as our extended instruction set. Finally, we benchmark the results examining cycle counts, clock frequency, wall clock time, as well as area and time area products of the design. Let's first get to RISC-V. What is RISC-V? It's a free, open, and as the name su suggests, a reduced instruction set architecture, which is extendable by design. It's meant for processor designs, as opposed, for example, simulation or binary translation. It does not dictate a specific microarchitectural style. More and more free implementations exist for some time now, and I will quickly show those which we consider to use in this work. The first, RISC-V implementation we examined was the rocket ship design. It utilizes the chisel hardware design language to actually generate a processor. It is quite configurable and offers an extension interface called the rocket custom coprocessor interface, as shown on the right. If a coprocessor is included in the design, it simply responds to a chosen opcode. The disadvantage here is that the coprocessor resides outside of the pipeline, and this may lead to pipeline stalls when, for example, the coprocessor requires multiple cycles. The Pico RV32 implementation by Claire Wolf is a very size op optimized implementation, and it offers a quite similar interface. If an instruction can't be decoded by the processor, it is simply offered to a bus that contains all the coprocessors. The coprocessors then decode and execute the instruction, returning an optional result register. The RISC-V multiplication instruction is actually implemented via this interface in the PicoRV processor. But for this work, we opted for the VexRIS-5 implementations by Charles Papon. We chose VexRIS-5 for its flexibility, which stems from a software-orientated, plugin-based approach for design. The design doesn't have any coprocessor. Instead, the design consists of a set of plugins, which extend the stages with logic. Each plugin has access to any stage re register, which enables highly adaptable designs with very few redundancies. The flexibility of Vexus 5 stems from its language, Spinal HGL. Spinal HGL is a very similar language to the aforementioned, aforementioned Chisel language. Spinal HGL is actually technically a software framework for the Scala programming language that serves as a hardware description language. It's quite important to note that Spinal HGL does not follow a high-level synthesis approach. The framework simply introduces powerful tools to describe hardware, and it's at its core not that different from common design languages. Scala lends itself well to designing a domain-specific language, for example, due to the optional infix notation or the flexible function naming scheme, which seamlessly enables introduction of new operators, as shown below. The biggest difference to Verilog or VHDL are the powerful elaboration tools. Instead of simple loops or conditionals, we can parameterize the, and elaborate with any Scala mechanism. The example on the right shows a carrierless multiplier, which utilizes a simple map and reduce expression, which will automatically result in a balance tree for the accumulations of the multiplier. The workflow for Spinal HDL is interoperable with existing hardware design languages. Spinal HDL will simply produce a generator for Verilog or VHDL, and the result can then simply be synthesized as usual. Using the sources produced by Spinal HDL in other language sources is very straightforward, as Spinal HDL will preserve all signal names used in the language. Integrating existing legacy sources is just as easy, as external hardware modules can be instantiated by Spinal HGL. Now let's get to our ESA extension. 
To explain the extension, I'll first talk about how the Vexpress 5 plugin system works. It helps not to think about Vexpress 5 as a CPU with discrete components such as a decoder, memory bus, or ALU. This is simply what Vexpress 5 pretends to be. Vexpress 5 is actually more a flexible and extendable pipeline, and the CPU is simply an emergent property of all the interworking plugins. The basic elements uh, of such a pipeline are the stages, stageables, and plugins. A plugin will simply generate additional logic inside of a stage. And the logic then uses and produces stageables, which can be any piece of data you may want to pass around in a pipeline. The pipeline generator will then automatically route uh, the produced data to all the consuming plugins. And if the data is required in the next stage, it will automatically be routed through registers. Let's go through a quick example. First, we define the stageables, which can be of any desired type. Then we plug in a piece of logic into the stage A. And for every piece of logic we plug into it, usually the logic produces some values which can be used by other plugins. And when these outputs are used within the same stage by another plugin, the signals are simply routed through the appropriate input. When, however, the outputs are used in another stage, the signals will automatically, automatically route, be routed through other registers. Shown here is an overview of the plugins that make up the CPU. The instruction bus plugin will fetch and inject, and inject an instruction. The decoder will then set initial values to some stageables depending on the instruction. The register file will then load and inject the register values referenced by the instruction. The source plugin and integer allo plugin produce the arithmetic results. And in the final stage, the register file will store the result. Note that the multiplication plugin will split the multiplication into four 16-bit multiplications, which are then assembled in the later stages. This is a great example of a plugin which uses multiple stages to produce a result. Now let's take a look at the extension we defined for the finite field arithmetic. Shown in the table above is the instruction format of the four arithmetic instruction. An addition, a subtraction, a multiplication, and a separate reduction instruction. Note that all instructions include a reduction. The separate reduction instruction simply serves as a normal reduction without any arithmetic, for example, to reduce sample polynomials. In its simplest variant, the extension simply reduces the instruction result by a fixed modulus. A second variant can reduce the result with a set of fixed moduli chosen by an index. And the last variant is actually completely flexible, with the modulus set by an internal register that contains the modulus and a pre-computed value. In future versions, such an internal register could also be designed to use a control and status register instead of specialized instructions to access these, these internal registers. Shown here is the hardware design with its three stages. For ease of use, we opted to, to, for the Barrett reduction. This avoids a conversion that, for example, the Montgomery reduction would require. And since we have access to any internal register, we can redu reduce the, reuse the ALU and the multiplication plugins. In the second and third stage, the extension uh, of the extension, the result is reduced. Note that the reduction uses fixed constants, which means that we can make use of small Hamming weights, substantially reducing the cost of small multipliers. The flexible variant, in turn, simply feeds values from registers instead of constants. To benchmark the design, we need a complete system. As Vexpress 5 is just the core, and so we loosely base our design on the Murex example of the Vexpress 5 project, which is a complete uh, system on a chip. Our design goal was to mimic an ARM Cortex-M3, so we extended the Murex example with a full multi-master bus so that the core can simultaneously fetch code and data. To mimic a separate flash memory for the code, we also separated our memory into two distinct blocks and linked all the executables accordingly to split the code and data sections. 
Now to assess the impact of the instruction set extension, we evaluated various design variants on the Xilinx Artix and Lattice Semi ICE 40 FPGA platforms. Included here in the table is a reference platform, an extension with a single fixed modulus, an extension with four fixed moduli, a flexible extension, as well as variants without a general purpose multiplier. The extensions introduce a fairly small overhead, with the flexible variants requiring the most. The variants without a general purpose multiplier are especially interesting, as they significantly reduce the size of the design. Shown here are the results as presented in the paper, but we do have an update. Later analysis showed that the memory bus was the longest part of the design. And introducing a buffer for the bus adds one cycle of latency for memory operations, but significantly, significantly raises the maximum frequency. It also shows that the first reduction stage of our extension is the longest path of the processor. Here, the simple custom variants profit significantly from the simple, simplified multiplications with constants that don't require any DSPs. Now let's have a look at lattice space cryptography on RISC-V. First, we developed a RISC-V implementation for finite field arithmetic without any extension. The approach of most reference implementations for the ciphers use a signed Montgomery reduction, which does not lend itself well to RISC-V. RISC-V does not include a signed extension, a signed extension instruction, so we need to use two shifts to sign extend a result. While one of the shifts can be avoided by shifting the multiplication constants, it's still quite cumbersome. But so, a reduct so we opted for a Barrett reduction, which is a much better fit for the platform. As RISC-V has separate instructions for the high and low result of multiplication, we can avoid any shifts otherwise necessary, reducing the reduction to just three instructions. Next is the number theoretic transform, which many lattice based cryptography, cryptography schemes use in some form or the other to speed up large polynomial multiplications. The reference implementations usually process the entity layer by layer, as shown here, the first layer, and then the second layer. A more common approach for optimized implementations is merging the computations of multiple layers as shown above. This avoids loads and stores of the coefficients. RISC-V has enough registers to merge three layers, while, for example, the ARM platform only has enough for merging two. While each merge doubles the number of loaded values, we still have enough registers to employ other optimization techniques, such as interleaving all four butterfly operations of the entity. Each butterfly of the entity requires a so-called twiddle factor, which in software implementations is usually pre-computed and stored in a lookup table. A lookup table is used as simple loads from a table are usually more efficient than a finite field operation required to compute it. Hardware implementations, however, use optimized circuits for finite field operations, so they compute the twiddle factors on the fly. And since our instruction set extension introduces such an optimized circuit, we can use these methods. So to implement the entity, we then use the iterative entity algorithm and pick an appropriate butterfly operation to ensure that the twiddle factors are used in ascending powers of the root of unity. This way we can almost entirely, entirely avoid lookup tables, the only exception being Kyber, which requires some twiddle factors for its polynomial multiplication due to the early termination of the entity. However, however we were able to reduce the lookup table to only 32 elements. Let's evaluate these results. We implemented the polynomial arithmetic, including a suitable entity and inverse entity for the Kaiba and New Hope ciphers. New Hope uh, uses polynomials with 512 and uh, 1024 coefficients, and Kaiba as a module LVE only needs uh, 256 coefficient. The left shows the cycle counts for the 1024 element polynomial arithmetic. Now, compared to the standard RISC-V implementation, which is in the middle, the 
custom instruction rec uh, reduces the number of cycles by 26%. A much bigger improvement is the code size shown on the right, which includes a pre the pre-computed table. As we employ some amount of unrolling, the code of the optimized implementation is larger than the reference code. The pre-computed tables, however, still make up a large portion of the code and in fact are larger than even unrolled code for the larger polynomial sizes. This way, the instruction set extension can offer a large advantage in terms of code size, as it doesn't need lookup tables. For the updated variant of the design with an additional bus latency, the speed up of the instruction set extension becomes more pronounced and is raised to 30%. As the instruction set extension completely avoids the additional latency introduced uh, to the load instructions, which is used for loading twiddle factors, its advantage becomes more pronounced. When we examine the whole scheme, the speed up is not as pronounced. The culprit here is the hash function used for the random sampling of the polynomials. The effect is of course also present in other implementations, for example, for the ARM platform. And the benchmark us benchmarks usually remove the influence of the hash function. And when we remove the cycle spent hashing, the speed up translates reasonably well to 13%. And once again, our newer uh, memory architecture introduces further speedups due to the missing lookup tables. The question now is whether such an instruction set architecture is worth the additional circuits. To that end, we examine a time area product of the design. Sadly, this is somewhat complicated as we don't have an adequate area translation for DSPs and RAM blocks. To estimate the time area product, we synthesize the design without any DSPs. And this, of course, significantly lengthens the longer path in the pipeline with a large impact on internal multipliers. Note that the custom instruction could significantly shrink the required memory, which could shift the time area product even further. Sadly, we can't emulate this result. The comparison shows, however, that designs without general purpose multiplier are particularly interesting. Once again, introducing an additional memory latency raises the maximum frequency, but greatly exacerbates the influence of the reduction stage. The variants without a general purpose multiplier, however, still stay the most attractive variants, and the fixed variants remain still quite fast, as they use uh, simplified multiplications with, content, with constants. To conclude. We presented an instruction set extension for arithmetic with finite fields and demonstrated its impact on lattice space cryptography. We, saw, we showed that such an extension can have a significant performance benefit, both in terms of cycle counts and workload speed, but especially code size. The results require some further analysis in a context beyond FPGAs, for example, in an ASIC. But the results are already quite promising, particularly for small architectures. If you want to experiment with the RISC-V platform presented here, I polish it a bit in my free time and publish it on the show URL. The platform targets several, several FPGAs, and if you don't have an FPGA at hand, it even includes a cycle accurate simulator that enables you to even debug your code with GBD, uh, GDB. And with that, I thank you for your time. <laughs>